Welcome back, watch fans. So, I have a little bit of a problem. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's just four watches here. And then I've got another one, two, three, four that I need to open up. So, why don't I open up one of these bags first? I've got so many. I, I've completely lost track where any, all of these are from. I have no clue. So we'll just, I'll just open one up right now. Um, let me find my uh, my simple uh, tool. Right. Don't want to be outdone, of course. Harbor Freight Tool seven ninety nine Survival Tool. This is like the one from Rambo. Kind of ridiculous. So quick story. I was driving by Harbor Freight and I went in there and I was like, oh, what the heck? You know, I'll just look. And then I saw this knife and I'm like, oh, my God, for five ninety nine, how can I not or no, six ninety nine? How can I not buy this? And, and I was like, what 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 if like I get trapped in my car and I need to survive and this this survival knife will help me. So, yeah, so I got that a little crazy. My wife was like, why are you buying that? That's ridiculous. But you know what? I think every man needs a survival knife. All right, let's see what this is. I have no idea. Literally no clue. All right. This is... Oh! I think this is a Timex. Upside down. All right. Let's see. I'm excited. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, I like this a lot. This is a Timex MK1 chronograph. Oh, that's great. All right, let's watch this video. Timex Group, formerly known as Timex Corporation, is an American global watch manufacturing company originally founded in 1854 under the name of the Waterbury Clock Company. In 1941, the company was purchased by Fred Olson and Company and reformed into the Timex Corporation. Timex Corporation continued to operate globally for many decades with manufacturing and offices in several countries. In 2008, the company was acquired by Timex Group BV, a privately held Dutch holding company, and was renamed Timex Group USA. Currently, Timex Group BV's products are manufactured in the Philippines, Hong Kong, China, France, India, and Switzerland, often based on technology that continues to be developed in the United States and in Germany. The most famous of these manufacturing facilities is their primary quartz factory located in Cebu, Philippines. This factory produces quality quartz movements that are used in their chronograph and classic line of watches. The watches produced at this factory account for nearly 70% of total movement manufacturing. It is also the home for Timex's famous Indiglo backlit illumination system. The movements produced from this factory are known in particular for their iconic Timex sound. While noticeable, the sound is not distracting, but adds to the distinctive characteristic that comes with the purchase of every analog Timex watch. Timex remains as one of the longest lived global watch manufacturers in the world. They are known not only for their spectacular quality and innovation, but for the exceptional value to cost. All Timex watches undergo a series of controlled tests to ensure the highest level of quality to the customer. When you buy a Timex, you are not just buying a watch, you are buying heritage. All right, guys, so hope you liked that quick video. Um, real quick, this model number, it is TW2R96300VQ. Very nice watch. I've been looking at this one for a while, and uh, I really did like the Timexes. That other Timex that I got, I've got the Metropolitan and one of the other MK1s. Uh, and so I figured, hey, I'll get this too. Let's get right into this stuff real quick. So 
You got the user manual, pretty simple. There's not too much to it, right? This is not a complicated watch. The fact that this has a uh, chronograph on it does not really change that. This is the standard Timex box. Um, you know, a little advertisement in here. Show off your Timex so you can hashtag on Pinterest, Facebook, and Snapchat. And uh, yeah, I guess not uh, Twitter. All right. Um, cool little foam pad, not much to talk about there. Uh, you know, it's a decent box. I don't know. People keep those things. You know, it's not like the nice Ingersoll boxes um, that are super nice and, you know, have, uh, uh, you know, made out of real wood and that stuff. But it's just a cardboard box. But it, it's nice. I mean, you know, you don't you don't want to be spending money on the box, right? But it's nice to see that some detail have has been spent some some attention to detail has been spent on the box so you don't think that you're just buying garbage even rolex spends money on that okay so let's get right into this um it's got uh, chrono minutes tenths time and seconds so uh that's referring to the sub sub dials this is a uh this is one of those watches also made in the philippines and it is uh, uses an acrylic crystal, which I think is super cool. I really like the acrylic crystals. I've got one right in front of me here. This is, it's the old standard that, uh, most watches came by. I think they're just like glass. They look really nice. Uh, they tend to scratch. It is what it is, but you can also polish them out real easy. Um, for example, this is an original, uh, uh Bolova Accutron, and that's also acrylic. They last forever. Uh, sometimes they, they can craze and they can crack over time, so they don't last obviously as long as, uh, as a mineral crystal or whatever, but they still work really well. Um, you can usually polish them out to like new. It doesn't really matter how old it is as long as it's not cracked due to dry, dry rotting. And you just polish it out. Uh, real simple. I do it all the time when I restore watches. I always try and use the originals. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to save it. Although I like this watch, I am probably going to sell this one just because I certainly have enough watches um and uh i'm running out of space but this is the instructions for it, real simple instructions and i'll put that off to the side because i intend to put that back but this is a gorgeous watch uh, i'm going to engage it so it's got hacking feature this is normally the seconds up here in the upper right uh and it is temporarily uh, off but push it in boom done and uh, now you will see oh okay there's the seconds so this is tense and let me verify. Nope, this is tense and this is minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, just you know, let me, let me set this really quick. All right, so when you use this, it is only ticking down the minutes there and it is, I guess to save power, it is not actually using the tense. This uh, minute, will do 30 minutes and it'll tick down every time this sweeps to a full minute but the uh, set the tenths of a second are actually calculating internally so when i stop it right let's say that uh, somebody's running and we're gonna we're gonna time them boom so it now stops it at the tenth of a second so that's actually pretty cool um i didn't realize that uh on the ingersolls that that is usually spinning regardless but that's how it uh, it saves power. Uh, again, you know, I do these videos without really doing any reading because I'm just, quite frankly, just opening them up really fast. Um, but that is pretty cool. Uh, I can see how that would save power and, and make this pretty useful. And then, of course, reset. So that's start, stop, and reset. Uh, pretty cool. Um, it's a very nice watch. I, I actually really like the style. It is sort of a... It is stainless steel, the entire thing, but it's sort of an anodized look to give it sort of a copper feel, but it is not copper. It is uh, pure stainless steel. Uh, the leather strap is uh, just normal leather, and it actually has MK1 listed up here, which I think is kind of cool. And I like the red, the red insert with the threading. Uh, it is not the most expensive uh, watch strap, but that's okay. Uh, and many times, you know, you might replace it with something like... Uh, I don't know, like this on, on the Citizen that I have uh, with a watch strap like that, I think would kind of look nice. Um, I mean, just look at that, it'd be kind of cool. Oops, oh, there we go. See, so I think it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Um, but it's a good strap, it's a good strap, it's nice. Uh, I can tell though, around here after a while, 
given some time, uh, this may wear out a little bit. Interesting that it's got the different uh, numbers there. I'm not sure really what the point of that is, but I do like this. Uh, I think in the end, if you're going to, to use this uh, a lot, might as well just replace the strap. Just my opinion. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do some, uh, some measurements, and then I'll also weigh it. I'm going to say it's about a 42. Yep, 42. And I think there's about a 20. Yep, 20. And the case depth. And have to be careful because even though it's plastic, you can actually scratch this. Um, but it's very nicely done. Got a little bit of. There we go. Okay. You can still scratch it even with plastic, so I want to be very careful. But uh, 13 and a half, which is decent. So I like that. Depth is depth is nice. Good solid watch. Um, the movement standard uh, uh, Timex movement i'm going to put a picture of it here and i'll put some information at the bottom um, so you can see this is the snap-on case uh, i believe this is water resistant to 30 meters let me see what does it say 60 meters okay that's that's a lot better 60 meters so it's not 100 uh, but this is nice right that's perfect 60 meters you could effectively go swimming with it i mean even 30 meters they say you can you can put it in a bath whatever I don't know that you want to, but um, this is a great watch if you're just going to use it uh, out like in the field or the country or something like that. I mean, this is going to get scratched, so you would want to polish it at some point once in a while. But otherwise, this is perfect. I mean, you can get it wet. It's really the look and style of this watch and, and the price. The price was very inexpensive. I think I paid, um, I mean, I'll, I'll put a picture of it here, but on eBay, I think I paid something like $39. I mean, this is spectacular for this watch. Uh, Truly, truly a huge benefit from Timex. Let's go ahead and weigh this because I'm always interested to see what these things weigh. I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to say about 60, 60, 70 grams. It's not very heavy. 55. So 55 grams uh, is pretty decent. Of course, you know, you get a better, a better strap and, uh, you know, your weight's going to go up. But this is a very reasonable, reasonable strap. Uh, weight. I'm going to go ahead and measure it now as well. I know a lot of people have asked for the strap length, so I want to make sure that I try and provide that. Uh, end to end, it is, uh, we're going to say 10. So it's 10 inches end to end. And let's get right into the loom because that tends to be my favorite part and we can also see the Indiglo. Because even though this has Indiglo, it is also a, a loom watch as well. No, I guess it's not. Let's see. Indiglo. Oh, that's so that's so cool. Look at that. Very cool. I like that. Man, it is it is quite good. The Indiglo really lights this up. You can see all the hands. Uh, my opinion, even better than the other MK1. They did a great job. But uh, I was surprised. This looked like it had loom on it, um, but I guess it does not. I suppose there's really no point in having a loom watch when it does have Indiglo. I mean, you can see that, look at that. There's clearly the spot for loom there, so they just didn't do it. But whatever, not a big deal. Uh, let's see, what else can I say about this? Um, it uses a CR2016 cell. I don't think I have one of those here, but it's the standard size. Um, for these, all of their, their movements of this style pretty much use it. Uh, I like it, I think it's spectacular. Um, I really like this watch. I mean, the styling is, is, is really nice on it. Um, of course, has a date. This is great, I mean, for the price, I mean, you just can't go wrong. This is just a really, really excellent watch. I really like it. Um, it also has quick quick release bars on here, which is fantastic. I mean, you just it just, does, it just doesn't get easier than that. These are all things that typically you pay for extra when you get those watch straps, but that makes it nice in case you want to replace this really quick. Um, I try and get some good pictures so you can see and try not to go too fast because I want you to really get a view of what this looks like up close. So, and I'll just be quiet so you can 
listen to the music while I do some some slow shots, slow glamour shots. All right. If you have any questions, uh, please leave comments below. Uh, really appreciate I really appreciate your subscription. Um, and uh, if you like this video, please leave a like. Otherwise, thank you very much.